I'm Chris. This is Fox's Electric Adventures. Hi. Well, we are at the Annapolis Boat Show. <laughs> I'm getting all the boat shows confused. First there was Newport, then there was um, Norwalk, and now we're at Annapolis. This is the Annapolis Motor Boat Show, and I just met with the folks at Villar you're not going to believe what they're doing. They have a hydrofoil electric boat. Take a look. Uh, Dustin Tupper here at the 2025 Annapolis Boat Show. Um, I'm a COO and co-founder of Velar Boats. Good morning, I'm Matt Moore. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Velar Boats. We're on our Artemis 23 by Velar Boats. Started as the brainchild of Matt, as most things do, in his, in his head, and it, it came out very well. It, uh, about three and a half years ago, um, Matt had the idea. We, uh, we worked at Scout Boats together for almost a decade each. The idea came from Matt, and the thought was to do our, go off and do our own thing from all our experiences that we learned. But he definitely convinced me with the idea to go electric and uh, use a hydrofoil to, um, to make it different and ultimately better. Yeah, I think Dustin hit, 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 hit it all there. We, uh, we wanted to be a little bit unique. You know, if you're, in, if you're in Charleston, South Carolina, it's a very you know, bustling boat building hub. So let me ask you a few questions. Um, so you decided to go electric, which is great helps me out because I'm interested in everything electric yeah. propulsion. In terms of going electric, what was the, was there a cost analysis benefit or was it no, it's just quieter, cleaner? What, what, what kind of, for you at least, what was, what was the, uh, the driving factor of his suggestion? The driving factor that really sold me was the differentiator at first. It was different. We'd seen other electric boats and they were okay. Um, so we, we definitely felt we could tackle that with the electric aspect, make a boat that satisfies the day boat user and being electric, not limited by the range. Um, we're about double the range as almost every other electric boat that we know of that's not fully foiling. But again, that differentiator from the fully foiling boats, Candela, some of those, not very conducive to coastal waters, day boating, pulling up on a sandbar. Um, so we feel we balance those very well to achieve a better boat for the for the day boat user. In regards to the experience of being on the boat, which we're going to try in a few minutes, um, what are some of the big um, factors for someone who's a gas or diesel person and we need to convince them to give it a shot? Yeah, so that's a great question. You know, like Dustin was saying, we, we set out to make the best day boat possible, right? And then, you know, it happens to be electric. Um, but what, what's going to bring people over is, one, it is going to be able to do almost every single thing you're going to be able to do on a standard 23-foot, you know, uh, internal combustion engine boat. You know, you've got, we've got about 40 miles of range. You're going to be able to go, you know, 22 miles an hour at, at that range. Top speed's going to be 30 miles an hour. Um, and so you can do all those things. Again, like Dustin was saying, we use this term Eurostal. So we have kind of a European aesthetic look. It's very minimalistic. Um, but we've got coastal functionality, so you can do anything. You can take this boat fishing, you can take it to the sandbar, you can cruise on it, you can do water sports. Um, all those different kinds of things are all the standard things that you would typically do um, with the boat is what's going to bring people in. But we also built the boat to be really approachable, right? We've seen this industry, you know, if you look at all these boats here, boats get way more complicated and way more complex, and you have to have captains, and you got to really be comfortable but we built we went the other way but we had a rule my mom had to be able to dock the boat and my mom's, <laughs> my mom's a very talented person but she's just not a boater but she can dock the boat right low end maneuverability is going to be superior to any boat here i'll take it up against any boat at this show and low end maneuverability has got a joystick motors go 90 90 um and one benefit that we all get every single time and we didn't necessarily design for it it just kind of happens but you know, when we first started out, we said we have to answer the range problem. So we've answered that with the foil, but when the boat comes up out of the water, right, you've got about this much of the boat in the water, but you go over wake, you go over anything, and it's dead smooth. You're not gonna bounce, you're not gonna do any of that. Um, and it's it's really the most 
unique thing I think about the boom. People are always, wow, I can't believe that just uh, happened. One thing we should definitely talk about is batteries um, and battery technology. Uh, the batteries currently are about 25% weight of the boat um, and a good cost impact on the boat for sure. As that technology continues to improve and um, evolve from a safety aspect, density aspect, it'll only make the boat better and better. Uh, we currently have lithium ion phosphate in this boat in a 60 kilowatt hour bank. That's six batteries on each side. Testing and implementing solid state battery technology. Um, that is the same physical footprint and weight, double the energy density literally. So we'll have 120 kilowatts with the same weight. Um, this, is a, this is a solid state 12 volt battery, 90 amp hour versus a typical, this one's lead acid, deep, you know, deep cell. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. As that continues to evolve, even from that, it will make the boat better and better. Um, you know, on the batteries and the life cycles, these, these lithium ion phosphates have, I think it's 4,000 charge cycles. So everybody wishes they use their boat more. Uh, if you use it every day for 10 years in, in a row, then you would need to replace your batteries. And unfortunately, it's probably not gonna happen for many of us, but uh, even if it did, 10 years is a long time. Are you about ready? There's a good wake over there. Right now we're, you know, pretty idle speed, about one, two uh, miles an hour speed over ground, and we're about to hit it and uh, enjoy. Watch yep. it. So that's our whole shot. And uh, if you're not holding on, you'll definitely fall off. We're going, I mean, instantly 20 miles an hour. Um, you're on plane about 12 miles an hour. We say on plane, you're on foil about 12 miles an hour. Uh, it's really, really easy. No bow rise, a smooth ride. And as you'll see right here, as we go over this wake, um, you're not worried about your drink's filling. It eats up that wake, that foil assist doesn't even move the boat. We're talking about doing uh, the old Serta commercial, getting our bow table with a bottle, a glass of wine and just going over wakes to prove that out. Could you use a uh, glass of scotch? That, that's right, there we go, now we're talking. The sound of the wind and the water is all you have. I um, feel like I'm on my sailboat, but going extremely fast. That's a very good sensation and a good point. We uh, feel like you're on a very fast sailboat just because that's all you hear is the wind and the water. Literally no noise, even compared to other electric boats. There's no gearing, no belts. It's a direct drive. Now here comes a fast mover. This will be a perfect wake to capture. We've had it in Charleston Harbor, two foot, uh, two foot seas, quartering, and it just eats it up. The foil, semi-foil uh, suspension really is a game changer with the smoothness of the ride. It makes it more enjoyable for everybody. So normally in a regular boat, you're going to need to go 45 to the wave you're here. About, you need to brace it, but here you're just going right over top. That was amazing. Yes, it is amazing. So this is the point where I'm supposed to say, hey, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. All right, here's the deal. Most of you don't have a YouTube account, so you can't subscribe. I get it. So if you like green energy, and you like doing positive things for the earth, like I'm trying to make content for people to think differently about how they propel their, their vehicles, go get a YouTube account. Then it's free. Then you can subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell. You never have to do that again once you do it. And then my videos, you can like them, you can dislike them, you can leave a positive comment, you can leave a negative comment. All feedback is good. All YouTube cares about is how much interaction do you have and how many subscribers you have. The more I have and the more interaction, the more they're going to show my video to people who aren't seeing it. So I hope you help me out. Let's get back to the video. That was an unintended benefit, um, but one of the biggest ones that we have. I mean, as you see, you're just, just rolling right over them. The turning and the handling because of that 90 degree capability, it'll handle like a jet ski even at speed. I mean, we can do a, a U-turn in about 50 feet. So you can also, one scenario for the family day boating is uh, water sports. The low end torque, as you saw during our hole shot, um, uh, we pulled up a 240 pound guy on a slalom ski, no problem. Wake boarders, um, wake surfers, uh, tubing, anything you want is easily doable with this boat and the power 
it provides. Look at these guys, they're screaming along. <laughs> we might be quieter than them. They're under power right now. Don't they know it's a no-wake zone? <laughs> <laughs> So what about people who are perhaps more into the sailing lifestyle, but they're getting older, they're, you know, their joints aren't what they used to be. They can't be hauling up rigging, they can't be tending the sails, but they still want to enjoy the passion of being on the water in a quiet, you know, effortless experience. That is a great point, and we've seen tremendous traction with current sailors and, and ex-sailors um, as, they, as they get older. This boat provides the same experience. Like you said, it's quiet. It's the wind and the water is all you hear. But the added benefit of the ease of use and maintenance. Uh, they don't have to, uh, the boat stops on a dime as well. <laughs> I just that discovered is, that. It's almost like you have brakes. <laughs> um, but, this, but for sailors, they get the same experience with less maintenance and hassle. They can use the boat and enjoy the water without having to worry about their rigging and all their lines and sails um, because of the maintenance aspect that we talked about earlier. Definitely need to mention old Pete, Matt. So the hull and foil design for this boat is a 23 foot catamaran. Um, so you have two hulls um, and then we have a fixed foil between the two hulls about at the helm. Um, it's two struts that come down from the inboard sides of the hull and then just a flat foil um, in between there. The running surface and the foil were designed by Morelli and Melvin of America's Cup experience and, and history. I think you've got 20 plus America's Cup campaigns. You gotta um, be careful about America's Cup. The, we Rhode Islanders have some real uh, hurt feelings. Yes, because well, they didn't... Because uh, they turned them into catamarans. Yep. I, mean, they, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how much Pete had to do with that, but uh, he definitely took advantage of it with his experience in foil design and hull design. Um, and so we leaned on that. We said, you know, we're, we're not experts in that. We need to call on the very best. And, and Pete definitely took the call and answered the bell and designed a very efficient hull and foil uh, combined. I think it's between 30 and 40 percent efficiency gain with the, with the hull and the foil, um, which was the original intent, right, with the electric boat. Get our range up, which we are you know, roughly double most other electric boats. So we achieved that efficiency gain, but then the two added benefits with the maneuverability and the performance that we saw is as it lifts the boat, it, it turns more like a monohull than a, cat, than a catamaran. Instead of a flat turn, it'll, it'll lean into the turns a little bit as you experience the, uh, the smoothness over wake and chop and just being able to just enjoy the ride no matter the sea state. Um, so the foil and the hull are a big part of the boat. And thank you to Morelli and Melvin. The other thing that we did was uh, working on our own custom user interface. We wanted it, like the boat, to be minimalistic but functional. Um, so we took a lot of cues from like Apple CarPlay and that kind of thing. Um, so what we have here is a pretty unique user interface. Shows, you know, obviously all of your systems. And, excuse me. Shows all the systems and all those kind of things. Um, flip through here. You know, we've got this pretty cool GUI where you, know, you turn it on, it'll show you on the screen, you know, what lights are on, um, all of that, uh, pumps, you know, same, same thing, tells you which pumps are on. It's a pretty unique user interface, uh, doing a lot of updates to this constantly so that we make it as automated as possible. All right, so, uh, again, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but, uh, but it's very approachable when it comes to docking. There's nothing super complex about it. We have this joystick system works really well with the motors going 90 90 we'll show you that in a minute you can raise them up so they go all the way one direction or all the way that we have a huge range um, which makes for very precise flow in control so when we get towards the dock or you're trailering it or anything like that switch it into joystick mode um, you can walk the boat you know sideways here I'll show you you, know, you twist it turn the boat And then we'll just walk it into the dock right here. How long does it take to get proficient with uh, the sideways uh, entry here? One or two uses. It's really easy. I mean, all you're doing is just moving the joystick where you want the boat to go. 
but because all the thrust is coming from the stern, you well, it, it's it, it all calculates. Okay. So it's pushing it, you know, keeping the bow over. So again, the motors will go 90 degrees one direction, 90 degrees the other direction, which gives you that super precise control at low end. So that's with the wheel. And then if we switch it to joystick mode, you know, it will automatically go back. And what gives you that sideways movement is the motors will split. So you got one going one direction, the other going the other direction at you know specific RPMs, which makes the boat move sideways. So I hope you enjoyed that video. The folks at Velar have been really accommodating. I appreciate them making time for me and for you. So if you like what you saw, there's a placard that tells you how to reach them, how to put an order in, and they'll take care of you. I'm Chris. This is Fox's Electric Adventures, and I'll see you on the next one.